Alex. A. Uh. Thy. Me. Ya. Alexa thymia. What is that? How do you know if you have it? What can you do about it? And how can more knowledge improve your relationships with others? In this video, I'm going to be answering all these questions and more. But first, for my returning friends, thanks for being here. And for anyone new to the channel, my name is Chris and I was diagnosed as autistic in addition to having ADHD at the age of 41. Alexithymia. What is alexithymia? Well, alexithymia has been loosely translated from Greek as meaning having no words for emotions. It was first described by Peter Sifnios, the psychotherapist who coined the term, as having difficulties recognizing and distinguishing between different emotions and sensations within the body, having trouble expressing emotions, lacking imagination, and focusing thoughts on external experiences rather than what's happening inside. But just like autism, alexithymia exists on a spectrum and looks different for each person. And while a lot of autistic people have alexithymia, not everyone who has alexithymia is autistic. Here are some numbers. It's estimated that anywhere from 5 to 10% of the general population has alexithymia, but it's at least double that for autistics based on studies. And one meta-study done in 2019 estimated almost 50% of autistic people have alexithymia. Understanding alexithymia also connects to a number of misconceptions about autism. So let's dive into those. And stick around because later I'll share some ideas on ways to improve your understanding of your feelings and emotions specific to alexithymia and how to communicate them to others. Inability to describe feelings. The ability to describe feelings accurately and concisely must be some sort of superpower. I've struggled with this for as long as I can remember. But until I got my autism diagnosis, I didn't understand how much alexithymia impacted my life. Here are a couple of examples. I'm at the doctor's office and he asked me, dude, what's wrong? What's bothering you? So I tell him, well, <laughs> my body and my brain hurt. Then he asks me, Ooh, on a scale from one to 10, how much does it hurt? That's the question that always throws me off. I mean, what does it even mean? I always end up saying five just to get this part of the appointment over with. But now I'm realizing it's because I don't register feelings in the same way as other people. How can I accurately describe the range of emotions I have when I feel like there aren't enough words to describe them? And now this doctor wants me to oversimplify it to a number on an arbitrary scale. What? What? Well, hold on there for a second, cowboy. Wait a minute. Should I be considering the constant brain pain that I always have as part of this pain scale? I mean, honestly, what a dumb question to ask. And from someone who is supposed to help me feel better. But you can't just ignore the question. That's rude. So I try to explain myself. Well, I have sharp electric shocks. I constantly feel going through my brain. <laughs> and that sucks. I regularly feel dizzy with certain senses too loud, too many different noises, too many different kinds of lights, too many bright lights, that kind of stuff. I'm also tense a lot and sometimes angry. So I think that's one of the reasons my back hurts and I cough daily. It's worse when I'm anxious or in a hurry. And now my lungs hurt and I'm worried about coughing more because it'll make my back hurt more. Also, if I cough too much, I'm pretty sure my back will get thrown out. And when that happens, I can't move, which means Debbie, my wife will have to help me put on my socks and that sucks. And yes, all of this has actually happened to me. So doctor, buddy old pal, you want me to tell you how I'm feeling, but on a scale from one to 10, without any guidance on what these mean for me compared to what they mean for you? Sorry. So now what happens is I'm sitting in this ugly medical office feeling unheard and alone, but the frustration doesn't stop here. I leave the doctor's office feeling worse than when I went in. When I get home, I'm feeling an immense combination of emotions and feelings. And Debbie can tell something's up. So she asked me to describe the feeling. I'm not really sure how to tell her that it's so many feelings that I feel nauseous. My mind gets pulverized when I try to think about it and put it into words. It's physical pain all over, intense piercing pain, then feeling lonely, hopeless, disgusted with the world. Then ideas start flying around and bouncing all over the place in my brain. Ping, ping, ping. It's constant. And right when I think I might have captured some of the right words to describe the mess that's happening inside, my feelings suddenly change, both in feelings, but also in intensity. It's insane. I can't keep up with it all. There's just too much going on to describe at one time. So I usually say overwhelmed. I'm feeling overwhelmed. But that feeling of being overwhelmed means something very different to me than it does to my wife, Debbie, probably due to our neurological differences. 
My feelings and emotions are sudden, quick, and dynamic. I'll have a great idea, which will get me excited, and then I'll suddenly worry it won't happen. I'll get flooded with concerns and thoughts over cost and other limitations and things like that, and then I'll start feeling anxious as those concerns mount into scenarios I play in my mind. And the crazy thing is, that exact idea lasts just a few minutes before a new one pops in, sometimes just seconds. And then, you guessed it, more scenarios. That's part of being autistic. Our brains never stop. But try explaining that to someone who doesn't experience it, and you'll understand why it's not actually about being able to describe or connect with the feelings. Yes, those things are challenging, but it's also about not being able to keep up with the feelings by the time I'm ready to explain them. They're too complex and fluid, which makes me wonder whether the way I experience feelings is more multifaceted than someone who isn't autistic. Difficulties describing and showing emotions. It's also the misconception that having difficulties describing or showing feelings or emotions means that it isn't happening. But that's just not true. And now I'm learning it might appear that way because of alexithymia. But also remember that autism is defined and diagnosed partly based on difficulties with social situations. So as someone who has flew under the radar for most of my life, I can tell you that I have a lot of feelings and emotions. Sometimes so many that it overwhelms me. And I imagine many other autistic people do too. Being able to sit down and tell you about this might be a challenge we just don't care to engage in at a particular time. But difficulties describing emotions or showing emotions doesn't mean we aren't feeling them. We might actually be feeling them so much that we're frozen and locked in a state where we can't show the feelings or talk about them. We might even be feeling them so intensely that a shutdown or meltdown occurs. This is what actually happens frequently for kids when they have a meltdown. And it's why you shouldn't force them to talk during a meltdown because it'll make it worse. I say this as an educator who has worked with a lot of kids who have had challenges describing emotions and are autistic or might have alexithymia. For me during a meltdown, I sometimes don't even know why I'm acting this way. But for a kid, they're having big feelings and this is the only way they can get it out and show it. So then they just might wanna be left alone for a while. Trying to process something extra and answer questions about feelings in that moment will be way too much because the child might not have even figured it out. And even later, they might have a hard time figuring it out and putting it into words too. When I'm in burnout, describing and showing emotions is even harder. I have things I need and I wanna tell the people close to me how I'm feeling because I know it'll help us all, but I can't do it. I just, I can't do it. It bothers me. It really bothers me because I know I need to do it, but I just can't. What I usually do instead is I end up shutting them out because it's easier for my brain. I need time to process my own emotions before I can do anything else. But when I'm in burnout, it's a million times harder. Connections to anxiety. The world and life in general is pretty stressful for most autistics. And I did a whole video on ways the world works against autistic people already. But in general, navigating a world that just isn't designed for us is hard and stressful. This can lead to anxiety among other things. For me, I developed anxiety over a lifetime of masking before my autism diagnosis. But even after being diagnosed, the anxiety that I developed from decades of trying to fit in isn't going to go away overnight. There are also a number of studies that show that autistic people have experienced more trauma on average than the general population. And trauma often leads to anxiety. For adults, especially people in my generation and older, no, I'm not that old. We got in trouble. We got in trouble a lot as kids, probably both at school and at home. For me, sometimes that was when I showed too many emotions, like overexcitement, joy, frustration, anger. But I showed them in ways the teachers or adults around me felt was inappropriate. Not surprisingly, this has made me overly cautious about showing emotions sometimes, and I get anxious when I do. So how does all of this relate to alexithymia? Well, my often dysregulated body is almost always in fight or flight mode. I mean, I hear a car horn, I launch into space. Then the doorbell rings, I go into cardiac arrest. And then I realize I need to leave soon to go to work. And that means navigating traffic and encountering people, sounds, and all of that crazy stuff. And that seems to make my brain want to explode. All of this is really stressful and sucks. So then when something else happens, how can I tell how I really feel when I already feel anxious pretty often? Anxiety is one of those things that kind of muffles everything else. So when I'm feeling anxious, it's hard for me to notice other feelings until I calm down. And then during autistic burnout, I feel anxious almost all the time, where it's really hard to breathe or not notice the constant chest tightness. And then there's the feelings of overstimulation all over my body. The itchiness, the discomfort, the headaches. It sucks. Anxiety makes it hard to connect to all these other feelings, especially if you struggle with alexithymia. 
but anxiety from showing emotions also makes it hard to express feelings, which is also alexithymia. All of it can be pretty challenging for my brain. Interoception. I've talked a bit about interoception in other videos, but it's sometimes called an extra sense because it helps our bodies understand what's happening inside. But for many of us autistic people, we struggle with interoception. So those cues that tell us, you're hungry, go eat. You're thirsty, get water. You're overwhelmed, take a break, bud. Well, they just don't work properly. This can also apply to feelings or noticing pain. It's not only that we struggle to communicate these feelings, it's that we really don't notice them the same way other people do. So even though I might be encouraged to pause to see how I feel, I sometimes feel so disconnected to the feeling or how to describe it all that I just can't do it. It's frustrating for the other person, but imagine how frustrating it is for me. I can't even figure out what I need because my feelings are so twisted up sometimes. And even when I try to pause to notice, I just can't. My interoception abilities are not functioning properly and it sucks. It's even worse when I'm in burnout or feeling generally overwhelmed or tired. Lack of empathy. I hear and read a lot about how autistic people lack empathy. Maybe, or maybe not. Consider this. Perhaps like me, you have alexithymia and struggle to identify and talk about your own emotions. I mean, it's hard to connect to someone else's emotions when you can't even connect to your own. But this isn't even the full picture because some autistics have the opposite issue and actually empathize a lot to the point where there is a double empathy issue as it's called by Dr. Damian Milton. I'll talk about this in another video in more detail, but basically the issue is autistics have a hard time connecting and communicating with non-autistics. They feel empathy and strong emotions, but articulating those feelings and conveying them to someone whose neurology is completely different from their own is where the problem lies. <sighs> yes. Then because it's thought that autistics are the ones lacking social skills and empathy, it's easy for non-autistics to write them off and think, oh, you're just weird without actually trying to empathize with the autistic person. It's called the double empathy problem because of the need for empathy to go both ways. Not only for the autistic person to mold into what the holistic thinks is the correct way to show empathy. Two people are experiencing the world in very different ways. And there's a communication breakdown between the two. But is it fair to put all of that on the autistic person? A person who actually might be able to connect just fine with other people's feelings, especially other autistic people, but just not be able to talk about it or act in a way that is socially acceptable in a neurotypical world. We can return to that in another video, but it's worth thinking about. And you can Google double empathy to learn more. But to say that autistics lack empathy is not entirely the full picture. Yes, many, as many as half of us have alexithymia and struggle to identify and convey emotions which means we might struggle to outwardly show empathy, but it's not because of being autistic necessarily. And it's certainly not because of being self-centered or narcissistic. It's because we might have alexithymia. What can you do? Okay, okay. So you have alexithymia or you know someone who does. Now what? What are things that you can do that will help? Well, stim when needed. This can help to readjust feelings to a more balanced state so that you can pay more attention to your feelings. Practice identifying your own unique feelings. Like with the doctor, number your feelings and share your descriptions of each number with friends or family. Also, give yourself time, space, and patience to notice your needs and feelings. It's hard to notice specific feelings when you're just overwhelmed by everything. A quiet space to be alone and think can really help a lot. For kids, allow them to talk about their feelings in a safe spot in order to practice this in the future. If you refrain from judgments, it'll encourage the child to continue practicing this in the future. Be a good listener with friends who may struggle with alexithymia. And remember, no judgments. Give time and space if someone has a meltdown. Realize this could partially be because of frustration at not being able to express feelings adequately. Be supportive and patient. This includes with yourself after a meltdown. Last, notice your triggers for certain feelings and not only for the negative feelings or emotions. Certain smells can calm me down and make me feel relaxed. Comfort foods can bring me joy. Notice these and maybe even jot them down. Then, when you're feeling up for it, tell someone else about your feelings and triggers too. Then, when you're having a hard time expressing feelings, they might be a step ahead of you with helping you get what you need. Do you or someone you know have alexithymia? What helps you or what would you like help with? Drop your thoughts, comments, questions, and experiences in the comments. I'll always read them and learn a lot from them. And I hope you'll find our community helpful too. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more insight into autism. Thanks for being here. Navigating a world that just isn't designed for us is hard and stressful. This can, of course, this can, this, this, this can lead to anxiety among other things. 
For me, I developed anxiety over a lifetime of masking before my autism diagnosis.